Hello, this is CPX, number 34, the living members of the church, 9.5, page 30 to 31, question and answer, number 21 to 26. Hello, my name is Father David Nix. If you're on the video version, you might notice I don't have my habit on today. That's because of a few reasons. One, my current habits don't fit. Two, I am having some habits made. And three, this is a good test if while traveling, say, incognito pro-life work, perhaps one day mission work in Asia, if just bringing my phone, I can continue the VLX and the CPX series. One of the things you'll notice today versus when I put this on a phone like today versus a computer is today will be less heavily edited. So you won't see the jump cuts. Uh, the advantage of that is it's gonna be more human, more smooth. Uh, the disadvantage is mistakes will not be edited out. Sometimes I won't have an option, I'll just have the phone, no computer, no habit, but do let me know if you like the little bit more informal style without the jump cuts, less heavily edited as we're going to do today. Let's begin in prayer. Nomine Patris, Affiliate, Spiritus Santi, Heavenly King, Consoler Spirit, Spirit of Truth, who art present everywhere and filling all things, treasure of all good and source of all life, come dwell in us, cleanse us and save us, you who are all good, amen. In Nomine Patris, Affiliate, Spiritus Santi, amen. CPX stands for Catechism of Pope St. Pius X. Page 30, question and answer number 21 forwards. Question number 21, what is the constitution of the Church of Jesus Christ? Answer, the Church of Jesus Christ has been constituted as a true and perfect society, and in her we can distinguish a soul and a body. Question number two, what is the soul of the Church? In what does the soul of the Church consist? Answer, the soul of the Church consists in her internal and spiritual endowments, that is, faith, hope, charity, the gifts of grace, and of the Holy Ghost, together with all the heavenly treasures which are hers through the merits of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and of the saints. Question number th 23, in what does the body of the church consist? Answer, the body of the church consists in her external and visible aspect, that is, in the association of her members, in her worship, in her teaching power, and in her and in her external rule and government. Question number 24, to be saved, is it enough to be any sort of member of the Catholic Church? Answer, no, to be saved, it is not enough to be any sort of member of the Catholic Church. It is necessary to be a living member. Question number 25, who are the living members of the Church? Answer, the living members of the Church are the just, and the just alone, that is, those who are actually in the grace of God. Question number 26, and who are the dead members? Answer, the dead members of the church are the faithful in mortal sin. Thus are the words of the Holy Pope. Timestamp. Today we're going to look at question number 22 and 24. One more time, question number 22, in what does the soul of the church consist? Answer, the soul of the church consists in her internal and spiritual endowments, that is, faith, hope, charity, the gifts of grace and of the Holy Ghost, together with all the heavenly treasures, which are hers through the merits of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and of the saints. Now, one of the things I love about tradition is there's never going to be any contradiction. So when you have the fundamentals of Catholic dogma by Ludwig Ott versus the Catechism of Pope St. Pius X, they're going to say the same thing. However, sometimes you are going to find a little bit different emphasis on things. And one of the things that Ott emphasizes that I really like, and that's part of that's because it's such a big book, he shows us that the soul of the Catholic Church is the Holy Ghost. It doesn't mean that the Holy Ghost is just there with the Church. The soul of the Catholic Church is the Holy Ghost. Listen to what Ott says, quoting several popes. In the encyclical Divinum Illud, 1897, Leo XIII declared, quote, Let the one proposition suffice. Christ is the head of the Church, the Holy Ghost, her soul, end quote. In the encyclical Mystici Corporis, Pius XII confirmed this doctrine. In its content, it asserts that like the soul in the body, the Holy Ghost is the principle of being and life in the church. It is the Holy Ghost who welds together the members of the church among themselves and with Christ the head. And the Holy Ghost is entirely in the head and entirely in the members of the mystical body. It is he who by his assistance upholds the hierarchy in the exercise of the teaching office of the pastoral office, and of the sacerdotal office. It is he who, with his grace, excites and fosters every salutary activity in the members of the mystical body. 
All life and growth of the mystical body proceeds from the divine life principle indwelling in it. So that's Ludwig Ott in the Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma. So one of the things to notice there is he would admit that there's times in church history, again, we've talked about the Arian crisis, when there can be many priests, many in the hierarchy in error, but as long as you have one priest out there, one bishop teaching the faith, then the Holy Ghost is still fulfilling that part in the sacerdotal office. Most of you know that when Christ returns, our guarantee is one person out there will have supernatural faith in his heart when Christ returns at the end of time. It doesn't mean Jesus is going to necessarily return at a time of flourishing faith. I hope it could be. But remember, Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Quite an ominous question. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on earth? So even though this sounded like a very tall order that came from Ludwig Ott, remember, the promise isn't quantitative, it's qualitative as far as the Holy Ghost filling the church. And this leads us to question number 24. The Holy Ghost is the soul of the church, especially in the living members of the church. Let's listen to number 24 one more time here. To be saved, is it enough to be any sort of member of the Catholic Church? Answer, no, to be saved, it's not enough to be any sort of member of the Catholic Church. It is necessary to be a living member. So remember, there are three theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity. When you are baptized, you go from being an original sin. The church fathers say you were a tabernacle of Satan. I've never preached that at a uh, sermon at a baptism because it would make a lot of the moms cry. But this is what the church fathers say. You're a tabernacle of Satan before your baptism. When you're baptized, you become a tabernacle of the Blessed Trinity to the point that St. Francis of Assisi would genuflect in front of newly baptized babies. I recently found out the early church was very similar in that. But in any case, if you are baptized and you don't have mortal sin on your soul, you have faith, hope, and charity inside of you. Now, when you commit a mortal sin, charity, supernatural charity, also called love, is extinguished. But unless that's a certain sin, for example, a sin of apostasy, faith and hope stay active in you. That's why we just heard in the last question today, what do you call a dead member of the church? And he said the faithful in mortal sin. Notice he said faithful in mortal sin. So you can still have the faith, you can still believe in Catholicism and be in mortal sin unless you've committed a sin like apostasy. Okay, so faith, hope, and charity are the three supernatural theological virtues. St. Thomas Aquinas describes it like this, that faith is like the bones and charity is like the flesh. And what happens is, if you are someone who believes the Catholic faith, but is in mortal sin, you're kind of like bones without flesh. I think elsewhere, St. Thomas Aquinas might even say, the person in mortal sin is still a part of the mystical body of Christ, but he's like a gangrenous member. Not a very beautiful thing to think of. But listen to this line again. To be saved, it's not enough to be any sort of member of the Catholic Church. It is necessary to be a living member. So if you are a member of the Catholic Church, meaning you were baptized, but living in mortal sin, you're a gangrenous member. Or the analogy in your soul is you're like bones without flesh. Now, as we approach the election, it's very interesting. People like to say this person or that person is a baptized Catholic. Is that enough? It's very interesting that nowadays we hear people mention this person is a baptized Catholic, that person is a baptized Catholic, but we never hear them bring us to where Pope St. Pius X just brought us, which is, are you a living member of the church? That's the one takeaway I want everyone to have today. It's not enough to be saved to be a member of the Catholic Church. You have to be a living member of the Catholic Church, meaning you've been baptized, and if you've committed a mortal sin, you have been to confession. And that includes repentance. You can't just go to confession as fire insurance. Okay, so nowadays we have these debates, we have these questions as we approach the election, and we say, well, this person is a member of the Catholic Church. Yes, but the thing you can say back to your friends is, but is he or she a living member of the Catholic Church? Now, someone might come back to you and say, well, you can't know for sure Catholics like, for example, Joe Biden or Nancy Pelosi are in mortal sin. You can't say they're not living members of the Catholic Church. Okay, you can maybe say, yeah, I can't say that for sure, but listen to it right here. The living members of the church are the just, and the just alone, that is, those who are actually living in the grace of God. Can you be promoting 
pre-born genocide of millions of people and still be living in the grace of God? Just say that to your friends. I'm not even going to answer it. It's such a stupid question. I'm not even going to answer it on this. I can't judge people, but you can give that question right back to them. First, when someone says it's enough for Biden or Pelosi to be a member of the Catholic Church, say, but are they living members of the Catholic Church? They will inevitably say back to you, you can't judge if they're a living member or a dead member. Just say that's true, but a living member could not publicly promote the preborn slaughter of children. Therefore, are these people living members? But you know what? Instead of judging others, let's look at our own lives. Take a look at a good examination of conscience. Make sure you don't have mortal sin on your soul. Look at a really good examination of conscience. Don't just look around and say, these people are bad because I'm concerned about getting the people watching this to heaven. So, anyone who is baptized, who is watching this, is a member of the Catholic Church. Arguably even Protestants, though at the age of eight, there's some debate if once they express themselves as Protestants, if they become heretics. There's, that's a long debate that I can't get into. But, if you are a Catholic, if you are watching this, if you are baptized, you're a member of the Church. But if, since your baptism, you've committed a mortal sin, you are only a living member of the church if you have repented for those sins and been to confession for those sins. So, this isn't a video to get everyone jumpy or scrupulous, but what I would like you to get into your vocabulary from now on is that it's not enough to be a member of the Catholic Church. You want to be a living member of the Catholic Church. And again, question number 26 says, and who are the dead members? The dead members of the church are the faithful in mortal sin. So again, that would be like someone who's still part of the mystical body. You're still part of the body of Christ, but you're a gangrenous member. You don't want to be a rotting member off the body of Christ. So this is the importance of sanctifying grace. You do not get any brownie points for having been baptized if you're living in sin. Let me say that again. You don't get any brownie points for being a baptized Catholic and living in mortal sin. That matters if that, that you can apply that if you are a big-time politician or just a plumber or a carpenter. This is why the most important thing is that you live in sanctifying grace and that you die in sanctifying grace. Please leave a couple comments if you like the uh, unedited version without the jump cuts. Please say an Our Father for me, especially the making of this habit. Et benedictio de omnipotentis, patris filii et spiritus sante, descendit super vos et maniat semper. Amen.